to today's live training. Um, I mean, IG live, whatever this thing's called. Um, I'm going to do like a chit chat, get ready with me kind of training today, partly because I see YouTubers do this all the time and they just make it look so easy and fun and just like the best thing ever. And partly because I'm getting ready for church and I don't have time to get ready and then do this video. So we're going to do two things at once. So excuse my bathroom. Um, I'm going to be multitasking. I'll just pop away my toothpaste here. I'm going to be multitasking this entire video. So I have no idea how this is going to go down. Just full disclosure. I have no idea if I'm actually going to be able to do two things at once, but we're going to see and we're going to try and figure it out. I've got literally, as you can see, have not done my hair yet. This is like classic me. I have like literally half an hour to get ready. Have not done my makeup. Have like, I've barely gotten dressed. Like this is just, this is just a regular occurrence for me. So we're just going to try and do two things at once. Um, my mirror is here, so I'm going to be looking like to try and do like makeup and stuff, but I'm going to chat to you guys at the same time. So bear with me. We'll see how we go. Like I said, I have no idea if I'm actually going to be able to do this. Hi, Rosie, but um, we're going to give it a shot. So if you will bear with me while I do my makeup and chat to you guys about something really important at the same time, then this is going to be amazing. All right. So we're going to chat today about something really important and something that <laughs> you guys already, I'm like, have no idea what to do first. Okay. We're going to chat about something really important and that something really important is the ego. So I was having a session with a client recently and we were talking about how to weaken or lessen the grip that the ego has on us. So for those of us that have been doing this work for a while, like the spiritual journey, just like on this path, we know that there exists two forces that compete for our attention or two parts of ourselves. We've got the higher self, which is the loving, kind, beautiful part of ourselves. And then we've got the ego, which is the separate self which is the part of us that gives into our lower nature or our base desires and wants to see us separate. And basically like ego, higher self 101, soul is always on the level of connection. So soul always wants us to connect with whoever's in front of us. Soul wants us to be connected to the source of all that is, the source of all life, wisdom and understanding. Ego wants to, um, ego is the separate self. Ego is the part of us that, um, wants to create hierarchies at levels and the ego is the part of us that, you know, tells us that we're not good enough, that tells us that we'll never amount to anything. The ego is the part of us that tells us that we're either better than people and that we need to work harder to be, um, sorry, that we're better than people and that they need to work harder to be more like us or that there are people that are better than us and we need to work to like get their approval. Right. So that's like basic, like ego soul 101 distinction. Um, I'm going to move on to like, I'm trying not to like sweat all my makeup off as I'm doing it. Um, so the quickest way and the title of this video, the quickest way or the quickest way to obtain freedom from the ego and or something to that effect. The quickest way for me that I found to maintain or to obtain freedom from the ego voice, the ego mind chatter, the ego state of mind is to do something that makes you feel like an idiot. Now the ego thrives on being more important, more valuable, more worthy, more whatever than everyone around us. The ego likes to tell us or construct these ideas that somehow, and it's unfortunate and it's such a shame that we live in a society that sort of perpetuates these ideas that somehow some human beings are more worthy, valuable, and um, sorry, valuable and worthy of love and respect and attention than other human beings. Like it's a fundamentally flawed concept, right? Because we were all created equal by God for God. And it's like the ego wants us to convince us that some people are more important than other people and that in order to maintain your important status, you need to do be have certain things, um, certain experiences, certain possessions, certain skills or attributes. And I'm just going to like go in here while I do my eyebrows. This can be like a makeup tutorial at the same time. Oh, how do, that's not sweat. I just haven't dried myself off in the shower. Okay. So it's like, the quickest way to dismantle, the quickest way to dispel the illusion that the ego tries to construct is through doing something that makes us feel like an idiot. So anything that takes us off the hierarchy that we've tried to play, like, tried to build in our mind, anything that reminds us that we are all equal, anything that reminds us that we are all one, anything remi that reminds us that we are completely infinite. For me, the most important thing and the immediate thing that comes to mind is, hey, Andrew, how are you going? The biggest thing that comes to mind is the first time I did yoga. Andrew, you'll be able to weigh on this really well. The first time I did yoga, I literally, my ego was going freaking crazy. I was, I walked into the studio and it was like, she's skinnier than me. I'm fatter than her. Like, I'm never going to be able to do this. Oh my God, everyone's so much better. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Like, it's just this mental chatter, right? And 
to me, that's like the fastest way to dispel the illusion of the ego is to lean into that discomfort, is to lean into the mental chatter, is to go into the places where you feel the most resistance and breathe through it and laugh through it. Like the ego, you guys literally cannot exist in the face of laughter. If you're there, if you're in some freaking tree pose, like some massive big pose, and your ego is constantly telling you, you're not enough, you're not enough, you're not enough. The power in doing that anyway and laughing through it, holy fuck, like cannot be understated. Because the second that you catch yourself and the second you say, you know what, this is freaking hilarious and I'm still just as worthy of love and belonging even though I look like an idiot right now, that's literally the quickest way to break the hold of the ego and to dispel the illusion that the ego tries to construct. So I like now you guys, like I just say that I don't have any shame anymore. <laughs> like my shame is like, my ego is like, it used to be so strong. You have no idea. Literally like I didn't know any, I had any other voice, but now my ego is like, so weak that I literally just have no shame about most things that I do because I'm so used to putting myself into situations and experiences where I feel and look like a beginner, where I feel and look like an idiot, where I am trying something for the very first time. Like I love being a beginner. I love going into situations and circumstances and experiences where I have no idea what the hell I'm doing because I know that my ego will not be strengthened by those experiences. I can stand up on stage and I can, you know, talk to a room full of a hundred people and I can get, you know, really beautiful positive feedback and all of this sort of stuff. My ego freaking loves that shit because it's like, you're important, you're like this, you're that, you're significant, you're whatever. If I go into a room of 50 people trying to do like a high ropes course or like, I'm trying to think what I was doing the other day, like a heels dance class or like a, anything where I feel like an absolute idiot, that is the time where my ego is not going to stand a chance. Like any time where, yeah, any situation that I go into where my ego goes on like high, high volume, high like repetition over and over and over again if I make it through that and if I lean into that I know I'm going to come out more connected to my soul because I'm breathing through it I'm doing it anyway I'm showing up excuse me I'm like scratching my nose <laughs> um, I'm doing it anyway I'm showing up and I'm persevering through so if you're having trouble at the moment distinguishing between your ego and your higher self or if your ego is on high volume a lot of the time and you're trying to find a way to turn it down Go into situations where you feel like an idiot. Go up to some random on the street and ask to give them a hug. <laughs> go into like a workplace and ask for like a, a new job. Like go and do something that will completely challenge the ego's hold on your personality and on your thoughts and on your life. Yeah. And I promise that you will come out of it more connected to your soul, more connected to the divine source of wisdom and life within you. And then just with this beautiful just having lessened and weakened the ego's power over your life. And that's what we want to do, you guys, to live from our soul, is to weaken the strength of the ego. We want to starve it. Yeah, we want to starve it. And so we can feed the soul. We don't want to crush it. We don't want to kill it. We don't want to destroy the ego. It's part of us. It's part of who we are. We want to love it and whatever, but we also don't want to nurture it. Like we don't want to feed it. We don't want to like buy into its ramblings and insane musings. We just want to eventually like start to take away its power until the soul is the most important voice and the soul is the only voice that we're listening to and it's just like living from that space you guys like I can't even I can't even express and just on a side note really quickly like light workers earth angels all you guys everyone watching this you know that that's what you're here to be do and have if you're not like you will know that you're doing your work in the world you'll know that you're showing up as who you really are and shining when you get like almost like called out or like recognized for the things that you do, like the amount of people that have come up and been like, um, who are you? Like, are you from this planet or like whatever? Like people will, people see your light and people like respond to it. And that's to me, like the greatest measure of success that could ever be and will ever be is like knowing or people giving you feedback that you're affecting or changing their life in a real and positive way. Not that you rely on that, not that you need that, but if you, you'll know that you're doing God's work, you'll know that you're doing your earth angel work and like using your gifts in the service of others and being the lighthouse when people start to respond to you in a way that like wouldn't suggest anything otherwise when people come up to you and thank you for things that you've done or people really like just acknowledge the beautiful work that you've done in the world and they thank you for being who you are. Like that's when you know, when you're getting that kind of feedback, that's when you know, yeah? Yeah, okay. <laughs>